thank you very much for watching the Sullivan's Project Spin Month Review for the month of September 2018. And here we are in uh, the VFW uh, on Garden Street, right by my house. And they're going to have a, a, a Mares and a Candidates Forum tonight. Here is, here is our current mayor of Sierra Vista. His name is Rick Mueller, Frederick J. Right? Frederick William. Frederick William Mueller. He's been here for a long time. He's a great, he's a great guy. So he's going to be, be in this debate tonight as well. So looking forward to seeing him and uh, Craig over there spar. It's going to be good. But he, he's doing a really good job here. Thanks. City, you're, you're on my mid-month review. This is a city, a city council member. This, that, are you staying or going? I'm staying. You're staying. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I know Alicia's getting married and, and she she's going. And she's she's going. going. Getting her master's. Yeah. yeah. So, very glad you're staying. You, you're, you do a great job with my council. Thank you. And we love the times you spend over at the Landmark Cafe over here. Thank you. Okay. We're going to start here in a second, guys. Uh, this is uh, the uh, city council and mayor of the way here hosted by the VFW. Starting from my right is Mr. Jason Schmidt. We have Sarah Pacheco. We have Craig Mount. On the other side of the podium, we have Carolyn Humphrey. We have Rick Mueller and William Benning. So just to give you all a quick rundown of how tonight's broadcast and forum is going, to, is going to go and what to expect. We will be drawing a name from, for every four candidate from before each question is asked. That candidate will have the opportunity to answer the question first. You will move to the podium and as soon as you start speaking, you will have two and a half minutes to respond. Once that candidate sits down, we will follow in, the, in sequence, sequential order. Uh, with the next candidate, every time a new question is asked, a new candidate's name will be drawn. No sound live. Just so you know. Who needs to speak up? That's why. Yes, I'm probably not using that word. Each candidate. No sound live. I got sound. Okay. Each candidate chose their own seats on the stage this evening. And so there was no way for any candidate to choose the seat ahead of time, you know, reserve your space. Uh, each candidate's names were put into our basket only once to prevent the same candidate from answering a question, going first more than once. Like I said, each candidate will have two and a half minutes to respond to each question, totaling a series of four questions. We will then take the fifth question from our Facebook Live audience, those of you that are watching, so if you hadn't had a chance to, to like or to share this broadcast, please do so now. And if you have a question you would like to ask a candidate, I encourage you to post that in the comment box as we will be moderating. So we're going to start with our first question. And my assistant moderator is going to pull a name from the basket, and that candidate will get the question first. Sarah Pacheco. First question, how would you describe the roles and responsibilities of a city council member? to city staff at City Hall, but also on higher levels to your representatives 
Uh, this is something that I shared before and I'll share again is that being on city council gives you a big microphone, right? It gives you a microphone where to, we can bring up those um, issues that are important to our uh, citizens and bring up the issues to not just to city government, but also at higher levels of government and federal agencies or state agencies, wherever it may be, they need to know, uh, be consistently reminded of the specific impact in our hometown of the decisions and the rulings that they make. So, thank you, Sarah. Next, Carolyn Alfred. Much <laughs> Thank you so much for having, for all of you being here, and for all of you tuning in tonight. Um, responsibility, uh, my role as a city council member when I get elected, I see it as being responsible for the city, uh, making sure balance, our, uh, budget is balanced, the policies are um, in accordance to what the consensus is of our city, and being responsible to the people of the city. Also, um, I see it as being an advocate for us at the state legislature, since so often that has become an issue, making sure we have money to pave our roads, we get our fair share to take care of our city, and also um, making sure that as your city council person, I'm an ambassador when I'm outside, when I'm in and around the city, and when I'm outside of Sierra Vista, I'm also representing Sierra Vista in a um, positive way that would reflect uh, well on all of us. Thank you. Next, Rick Bueller. You're not going to restate the question every time, but just make sure you get that right. I'll restate it. Okay. I, I don't need it, but I just want to make sure I'm not going ahead. First, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, and I appreciate the Service News Network for being here as well to, to host this forum. I know I don't need to tell you folks that uh, today is Registered Vote Day because you've probably already done that, so please share that with your friends. Uh, basically, I will tell you that I agree with what Sarah said, and I'll just add a couple of things. Uh, as a council member, one of your, your most key missions is to listen, listen to the community, listen to the other council members, ha having an open mind and being able to, to discuss uh, the issues. Uh, as mayor, uh, there's a little bit of a different role. One of the things as mayor you do is you, set the, you essentially ensure that the council functions properly so they get the work done. Part of that is making sure that, that we can have open and honest discussions in the council, and the other is to make sure that the items presented by the staff who have done, done their homework uh, to present the items have actually considered all, all the options that are reasonable and allow discussion to take place at the city council meeting. So actually the mayor is responsible to the council to make sure that the council functions appropriately, appropriately and gets the, gets the work done for the, for the, the people. Thank you. Next we have William Bain. Would you like me to go through the question, sir? No, ma'am, I'm good. So, so the mayor stole my line. <laughs> good evening. Good evening, how are we doing? Was it just me with the room? Um, room? Thanks for coming out. VFW, our home here every Friday night. I love this place. Love what it means, what it, what it does. Like the mayor said before me by two minutes, our job is to listen. I give you a textbook answer. Our job is to pass laws and arbitrate. Textbook answer. But there's so much more to it because people expect so much more from us. I was walking streets the other night, and I'll give an example of listening. And I knocked on one door, and this, this young lady, she must have been mid-80s, invited me in her house. So I walked in her house. She was living there alone. She asked me to sit on the couch and talk. So I sat on the couch and I keep 15, 20 minutes. I'll say hi, tell her who I am, ask her to vote for me, and I'll be on to the next house. Uh, the young lady excused herself. She went to her kitchen. She brought me an iced tea. A true iced tea, like a soda and a drink with sweet in it. About 20 minutes later, I'm still on this young lady's couch, and we haven't talked about anything except 
share just uh, how she got here, basically her life story. And to see her eyes and her smile was all that mattered at that point. So I spent about an hour and a half with this young lady. She made me some food, I was tried to, I wouldn't take any because I'd already eaten, plus I figured it'd be another hour. But all she wanted to do was sit and talk and have someone listen to her. Not tell her what we need, tell her what we're gonna do, but listen to this one piece of this big puzzle we call a community. That's what we do. The other thing we're supposed to be doing is reaching out to our, our state legislators. When uh, Drew Jones was still in office, I was working with him on royal, royal bills, the things that help us. Right now we have no apprenticeship programs. You've seen in the paper we had the first one start. Well, I've been trying to get an apprenticeship program for my industry, which is the hair industry, for about a year and a half now. November 2nd, Doug Ducey signed SB 1399 into law. And that's from people reaching out, asking them, this is what we need. The closest school, so everyone knows, is an hour and 45 minutes away. So advocate, yes, just being what the people want us to be. Anybody can sit and make a policy. Anybody can sit and arbitrate between and gather information and make a decision. It takes character and it takes ingenuity to sit down in someone's house for an hour and a half and just listen. But then take action with what they say. Thank you very much. Frank Mueller. Thank you. What do you hope to achieve as mayor? What direction do you hope to take our city in? Well, as I've said for the last eight years, we need to make sure that we're a city where people want to come and they can grow, raise a family, and be productive. There's a lot of components to be able to do that. We have a, a vision uh, that has been voted on by the voters in the uh, Vista 2030 plan that lays that out in detail. It's the uh, responsibility of council every two years through their strategic plan to determine which items have priority so that in addition to the regular Things we do on a regular basis, the police, the fire, the sewer, road repair, etc. We can continue to progress and make the service a better community. A couple of the areas that uh, I'm particularly interested in, and as you've seen uh, in the past years that needs to continue, is economic development. And granted, we had some fits and starts initially, but now we have a team that appears to be going uh, the right direction, and we need to we need to continue that. We have issues with water, but we're to address. We recently uh, had a, a positive court ruling from the uh, United, the, from the state Supreme Court on tribute, and we will be starting, I'm sure, shortly, a planning process to, to build those neighborhoods. That's something. That's something else. The transportation. Uh, we're, we just had a briefing yesterday on transportation. We have we have uh, issues with the cost of running the local transit system. Those those need to be be worked on. The uh, BRAC is pretty much a, a, a non-starter at this time, and that's something that's always on the horizon that we need to uh, be aware of. We basically killed sequestration, uh, even though it hasn't been completely eliminated from uh, the legislation. Again, that's another killer killer for the post. Uh, we we started the, uh, the uh, consolidated dispatch uh, with, with the county, that was something we've been trying to do for about 15 years, and the uh, monument fire indicated to us that that needed to be done so we could do that more, more effectively. And those are only some of the things that are coming up that we need to work on, and I've had experience in all those, and I believe I'm uniquely, uniquely qualified uh, to provide leadership on those issues. Thank you.
Uh, in particular, I look forward and hope to see our city capitalizing more on our proximity to Mexico. Um, we, for economic development purposes, and uh, create an environment that encourages developing not only that proximity, that relationship with Mexico, and increasing that, um, you know, using that Mexico, uh, that uh, relationship, but also, um, but also fostering development for businesses to come here. Um, we hosted very successfully the Sonora Fest here in Sierra Vista in June. And there were so many businesses that came up and um, brought their goods here and sold them here at the mall. And they found such success. You know, the mall said it was a record-breaking week weekend for sales for them. Um, I'm really excited that we're hosting that again. But it was one example of how we as a city can capitalize. We're right here on the border. And we can, you know, we're not exactly a border town. But we are in the border region. And we can be capitalizing on that more. And I'd love to see us do that. Um, I do want to see us build a strong, healthy community. That's really important to me. Um, part of the, uh, recently we've had a few health assessments done by the county level, the city level, by different health entities, identifying um, some issues in our city, prevalence of domestic violence being one of them, um, substance, substance abuse and mental health being listed as a top concern for health concern for the city repeatedly over many, many years, um, and also a rising homeless population. And those are public health issues that I would love to see our city take a lead in in um, addressing and check it out with me, something like that, something positive, and, and to reflect that in that, that way. Um, I want other people in Arizona to look at our community that way. Um, and a way we can do that is by marketing ourselves outside of Sierra Vista. The city started doing this successfully over the summer with the softball tournaments, and they brought in teams, various teams that came in from people who've never been to Sierra Vista before, and they said, they left with the impression of, wow, you guys have great weather, I wish I had this, they loved our fields. They're going home to where every city in Arizona they live, and I'm sorry. <laughs> They're telling people that, about this great experience they had here. So if we can capitalize on that, market ourselves better outside of Sierra Vista, that's one way of um, getting to that vision I have of all of us being proud of our home. Another way would be cleaning up our first impression, the West End, making it a more walkable downtown, more attractive, bringing in new businesses to those empty storefronts. And um, I assume so the, your first impression when you're driving in, the first thing you get stationed here, or you're right in from 90, you think, wow, this is nice. It's not, oh, it's not the story I heard the other day of a woman crying the first time she drove down Fry. I don't ever want to hear that again. So um, we have to change the environment, change the way people look at it, and I know uh, we'll all be proud to call this home. Thank you. William Bebe, what do you hope to achieve as a Sierra Vista City Council member? I like that word, achieve, because I haven't heard achieve yet. It's fun being last. This is twice. I'll be last all night. I love it. I can great things come out here. Here's, here's the issue we have. My, my main thing on my platform is the economy. I'm a small, I'm a full-time worker on the fort. I'm a small business owner. I own three to four hair salons, two here in Sierra Vista. Why it's important to me, or what I want to achieve, I want to be more economically sound. I'm tired of paying my employees and they come to me the day later saying, William, I can't make ends meet. Is there something we can do because it costs too much or this costs too much or I can't get things done? <coughs> so we have to be economically sound. When we are, guess what? Cost of living goes down. Everybody benefits. How do we become uh, economically sound? We make sound business decisions with our policies and our codes. We don't force things on businesses. We look at what they need and we look at what's going on and help the businesses. We are the soil the business is growing. The community and the business owner is everything else. We don't feed it, but we give it the soil to grow. It's kind of like if you planted or built your house on sand. As soon as that water comes around, you don't have a house no more. If we allow businesses to build on not solid ground, they're not going to stay here longer. 
If you're in business, you know 80% of businesses fail because of what? No business plan and no help. We have incubator systems that don't take a holistical approach to helping those businesses. Oh, your business plan looks great. Godspeed, have fun. A year later, they haven't looked at the business plan in a year. So where is that person and where is those people going back in saying, hey, update your business plan. The market's changed. Why is the market changed? Because that's what we're going to do when you say vision. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure codes don't put burdens on businesses when they try to open. You want to bring tech here. You want to bring cyber here. U of A has a great cyber program. You, uh, Coach East College also. I sat down with J.D. Rockwell and he wants to do things I want to do. I want to bring a baseball team here. I want to bring a soccer team here. Active college. But J.D., who needs the politics behind him, isn't going to do that. He's going to follow suit. He needs us as the city council and the mayor and the city going forward pushing these types of things. People ask how we can lower our medical problems. Let's advocate a healthy lifestyle. By doing that, we're going to change and we're going to achieve things we need to achieve, like a healthy economy. Carolyn. Uh, I don't want to get to go next. Just one more. Next. Well, you did, uh, you did it the other way. Last question. You put Greg right after Hope me. Hope you are, Mr. Mayor. Yes, you go next. I just I, I, yes. Okay. Would you consider okay. the West End of Sierra Vista to be thriving and successful? If not, what will you do as mayor to fix it? Well, there are individual businesses that are still thriving and successful. As a whole, the answer is no. One of the things that I've been involved with for a number of years is a number of projects to try to uh, improve the West End. Most of them have failed because of lack of funding, lack of interest, lack of working together with the community. I will give Mr. Mount credit for bringing back something that had been discussed before, which is uh, a creating a district that we had to call, unfortunately, by state law, sprung and blight, and that, of course, caused some pure order, resulted in the meeting that we had over here at the, at the tavern downtown, and the results going into that meeting was either we were going to do it, we were not going to do it, or we were going to come up with a group of the willing <coughs> property owners who were willing to, willing to address that. Fortunately, our staff did a great job of identifying a number of property owners in this area, and we eventually got that established, and we we came up with the, with the uh, $50,000 to, to move. And I support Mr. Mount, as he said, in, in that particular effort, and I'm glad we did it. But that's only one of the things we need to do. We've had a number of plans in the past. Uh, for lack of funding, they haven't happened. We need to continue to work on the West End. We need to increase, increase police patrol and, and, uh, and services to the West End. We need to uh, look very, very much forward to actually having money to improve the walkability and safety within the West End to make it attractive so that Businesses in the West End can all thrive, not just one or two. Uh, we did a survey uh, through the through the uh, community development department, and they basically we found out that overall in the city we only have eight percent of businesses that are uh, that need uh, their own, that uh, need to be open that are empty, and that's below the, the state average. The problem is. Over 50% of those are in the West End, and that justifies the money that we need to spend to bring back the West End. Thank you. Carolyn Upry, as a West End business owner, exactly. would you consider the West End service to be thriving and successful? I appreciate that. If not, what would you do with city council member to approve it? Um, well, I'm very supportive of the revitalizing and redevelopment of the West End because, like I said in a previous answer, I think changing that environment is going to do us a world of good, not just help the West End be better, it's going to help all of Sierra Vista because we're only as strong as, you know, our, as, our, as every neighborhood, it, has to, it all works together. Um, I know part of that is a concern about narrowing the lane. And I think uh, we don't, we don't, when it says narrowing lanes, we don't have to give up all five lanes. I know we can explore taking a little bit from each side because those lanes are bigger than the standard right now anyway. We could look into finding something that would keep 
um, the consensus of Sierra Vista and also help us uh, redevelop. The money's there because of the um, uh, ADOT be initiating the HERF exchange program. So the money's there to start the construction uh, in a year or so. And um, that's a lot of times that's a problem. We don't have funding to do this, but the money's there now. So we, sh we should move forward and, and make it happen. Um, also, I, and I say this a lot with my answers on things, I'm, I'm big on partnerships. Uh, I've been to every West End Commission meeting since March. And um, one of the things that they do as a commission is uh, neighborhood cleanups on the West End. A partnership between us and the county, county's going to provide roll-offs, uh, dumpsters, to make it easier so we can clean up uh, Crime Town. And that's huge because <laughs> The old way was using our trucks and getting volunteers to come out and making runs to the, and we turned in tons and tons of garbage already. I participate in those cleanups. That's a huge. That's going to make a huge difference for us working with the county to get the area cleaned up. Uh, and I think, I think um, the redevelopment will bring the businesses, and and that's going to help it thrive. I know there are very successful businesses there now, but. The West End in, entirely isn't thriving, and, and but it can be, and so I want to see it go in that direction. Thank you. <laughs> Will you be? <pay>? I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> would you consider the West End to be thriving and successful? If not, what would you do as a city council member to fix this? I think it's a hard question to answer, in all honesty. I think we have investors that want to go down to the West End, and we have them going down now. Um, earlier this year, or at the end of, this, end of last year in December, I was able to move the Arizona Community Foundation down to the West End. It's a landmark plaza. The director reached out to me. We were communicating and doing some other projects. And she wanted to move her location. So the first place I thought of was the West End. Um, I explained to her the benefits, not only in her, but the city. For those that don't know, the Arizona Community Foundation brings a lot of money into Arizona, but even more money into Sierra Vista, which is amazing. But she has high-end clients that come visit her. So they're going to the West End. So how important is it when you come to our city, come to the place we all keep talking about. So I went down there with uh, paint brushes, paint, paint guns, uh, spray washers, with other people. And we spray washed the whole building and we moved her in. And she's thriving down there. I have someone else that's about to open two businesses, two storefronts right on Fry Boulevard. People want to do it. We just got to give them more. Someone brought up the uh, Economic, De uh, Economic Development Foundation, the regional, and they have a $50,000 matching grant. The problem is you got to qualify for it. As a small business owner, if you're in the audience or you're watching, one of the hardest things to do is apply for a small business loan. That, yeah, that's a lot of money. Great, a loan. Right. Yes, it's a loan. It could be up to 100. It's a loan. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Do I get more time back? <laughs> um, but you have to qualify for it to help fix your facade. Well, why don't they work with the city who's giving away grants also? Let's work together and give these people some money. I know without it, it's hard to prosper on the West End. I know people that moved from the West End on the base, and the only reason they closed the shop on the West End was because the rent was too high. Now, that's nothing we can do as, as a city, but we can do things that help them. And that's what we have to start doing. Um, another good thing that's happening, money from the, um, money from the North Garden Avenue project, for those who haven't heard about it, we're, we're revitalizing the North Garden, North, Garden, North Garden Road, was diverted to Coronado. And I understand using as much resources as you can at the right place in the right time. Well, now, I was one of three people that was at the city council work session last night. Now we're bringing the North Garden Avenue back on the plate, so we're going to start doing the North Garden a Avenue project. Those are the things we got to start doing, is putting money to where money needs to go and keeping it there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I echo everyone here. I think we're in agreement. The answer is no. Um, just a drive down by Boulevard, and you see empty storefronts, and you see businesses that haven't been revitalized or haven't been brushed up in a long time, and you know that the answer to that is no. Um, there's also a lot of empty, undeveloped lots, and empty, un undeveloped land in an area that is really supposed to be our downtown, um, and that's concerning to me. 
as especially. Uh, I would love to see us a few things, a few ideas is that's been brought up but I haven't heard solutions to it is holding absentee landlords accountable. We have landlords and landowners who are own property and land in the West End that um, I understand that our city um, employees have reached out to. They try to get them to participate in the revitalization efforts and not even a response, not even any acknowledgement that we're trying to make our town better. You know, someone who's owned land for 50 years and just forgot about it and they live in another state and they don't care. You know, to me that's an issue that we need to hold them accountable. I don't know, honestly, um, I will tell you that I need to school myself a little bit on, on how that could be accomplished, uh, but I would love to see it accomplished. So um, that's one thing. I love that we have our new mural on the side of the Century Link building, and that's something I'd love to see us explore options for, I heard, for funding for public art. Downtown, I've uh, seen the revitalization efforts that include walk walkability, bikeability, and landscaping that is all wonderful, but I also want to see some public art. I think that helps us create an identity as a city. I think that also helps us, um, you know, create that downtown feel that I hope that we're looking for, that that's what this town needs, a, a center, a place that we, feel um, connects us to our town, connects us to the identity of our area. And I think public art would help with that as well as, you know, maybe the landscaping uh, and walkability, bikeability. And um, I would love to see the revitalization. I'm, I'm in support and I think it's a good start. And again, I, I would love to see it broadened and, and bigger and include more land and businesses. But that's my thoughts. Necessary. Several of you have already referenced that tonight in the panel. What will you do to receive the input of our citizens in critical decision making processes? For example, what will you do to consider suggestions or viewpoints of Sierra business citizens? Good question. So, the first thing you do, and, and, and it's being done now, um, there's, there's pages on Facebook, for instance, not just use Facebook, uh, where questions are posed every day. And as a candidate, you're on it, you're not on it. Candidates reply, candidates add, council members, members reply, council members don't. The first thing you have to do is keep an open mind. You have to listen to both sides and gather all the information. It's one of the first things they teach you in the Army when you, when you, when you start going through the Army, that military decision-making process. Identify the problem, and then you gather your information. If you make a decision before you gather the information, you're going to be biased towards whatever decision you want to make. So being transparent, you have to have avenues. Facebook, websites, social media. I put on events in Sierra Vista, so I'm at a lot of things at a lot of places, and I talk to people every time I'm there, every day I'm there, and get their input. What do they think about this? But you also have to look at, I don't want to say elders, but the people that's been there. So I listen to Craig Mount, Mr. Mayor, Rachel Bray, other people on council, and see what they do and what they don't, and I follow suit. See what works, what doesn't work. Being transparent doesn't mean I have to put everything out. What it means is when I do make that answer or make that decision, I have to let you know why. Um, I remember a council meeting I went to, and it was, a, it was a good topic being discussed. And one of the council members answered, voted no to doing something. And another council member asked them why. That's the biggest thing we owe everybody is why I'm voting this way or why I'm making this decision. It doesn't matter if you agree with me or don't agree with me. It doesn't matter if I stand up here and you think I'm a salesman. I know what I'm talking about in business and I know what I'm talking about in government. What matters though is why I'm doing something. What convinced me or what made me make that decision for the whole, not one group. Economics is about the whole. Making the decision will last a lifetime for the whole and not for one group or one individual. And that's what I like to do. Uh, you can ask me anything, I'm an open book. So that's, the, that's what transparent is. Thank you. What will you do to receive the input of our citizens in critical decision-making processes? Okay, thank you. Um, well, I, I, I wanna try to make myself as accessible as I can to everyone. So I have a Facebook page, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter and, and Instagram and I'm active 
on all of those. Um, and I keep a blog on my website, so as I'm learning things on the campaign trail, coming across new information and making up my, and honing my campaign um, platform, I've recorded all that. And I'm not just, it started as for myself offline, just writing down helps me remember things, but also to share with everyone where my thought process is. I intend to keep doing that when I'm elected so that you know why I feel this is, uh, a certain way on an issue, why I'm voting the way I'm voting. Um, I, and I, I know there's uh, House members at the legislature that do this, and it's really helpful to see the insight on how they're thinking, because you don't always get that perspective from all of them. Sometimes they don't even email you back. I will email you back. I will answer your phone calls. If I can't answer, I will call you back. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that that's my plan on staying transparent for everyone. I'm not, uh, I don't have a hidden agenda. I just want to do what's best for our city and right by all of you. Thank you. Rick Mueller, in the spirit of transparent government, what will you do to receive the input of our citizens in critical decision-making processes? Thank you. That, I think that's a great question. I think people have seen already, as for, for 10 years on council and the years as mayor, that I am out in the community, I am open and accessible, I talk to people, we discuss issues every place I go, uh, I am, I am willing to take time to sit down and, and discuss and in detail go through any decision I make. I also, as mayor, have sat down with the council members to make sure that we both understand each other's positions as well. That's part of transparency. And that's, that's the kind of personal transparency that uh, uh, the previous two speakers talked about. And I, I pretty much agree with everything William Benning said, so I'm not going to repeat all that. There's also, as mayor, you have to be concerned about the official transparency as well, the open meeting laws, the, the public, uh, the publications, the requests for information, and those kind of things as well, so that the, on the formal level, the people have access to all that information too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for this question. I um, think that our communication with our constituents is very, very important. Um, it's not just how do we talk to you and share with you our why and why we're making decisions, but how do we listen? How do we make sure that we listen to you? Um, I agree with some of the things that have been said. I think it's very important that we share our why when we make a decision, when we make a vote, share with you this is why I voted the way I did in my thought process. It also allows us that opportunity for constituents to answer back and say, why they might disagree with it, and we could be educated that way by our constituents. Um, I think the to the point of being there, I am out in this community. I have a long history of community service um, as a volunteer on many boards for nonprofits and organizations and committees. Um, some of those, um, I we started out just by getting together. We started a. Uh, the Service to Be Healthy Committee was doing what we call FaceTime on the West End, community FaceTime. We hold these FaceTime meetings where we just took input from uh, the community members, this was a few years ago, to listen in on what they felt the concerns of their neighborhood were on how and how we as a Be Healthy Committee could advocate for them or work to address health issues in the West End. And so being there is one of my tasks um, ways to address that to be out there in the public out there in your committees in your meetings um, visiting with you and listening to you and um, i do want to make myself as accessible as possible you know as been mentioned social media and um, all of those things I, I plan to continue to use social media to communicate but as well as pick up the phone, make a phone call, or invite me to coffee or in coffee, <laughs> coffee or to your group to talk. Um, that's something that I've done often in this community is um, being invited. There's we have a lot of organizations in this community that get together and talk about what's most important to them as a 
as a nonprofit group, as a service club, as a veterans club, and I've been invited um, as a speaker to many of those groups, and I would continue to visit with those groups and engage with you that way. You know, the well-being of our citizens as opposed to only businesses. Um, thank you for that question, whoever asked online, I don't know. Um, as Jason said, I do echo that well-being is not just your health, but it can be that we as a city have an opportunity to create policy systems and environments that create a well-being for our citizens. And some of those policies or systems and environments, um, I will give an example that the Be Healthy Community um, Committee several years ago looked at uh, safe routes to school, for example, that we wanted to affect um, healthy habits in children, and instead of saying, do this, do this, do this, to the kids, we um, looked at the environment that they lived in, and um, we identified a place on Avenue de Del Sol where the school district was busing um, kids from across the street, it was less than a mile, they were being bused because the parents didn't want the kids to cross a busy road to get to the school. So we advocated for a crosswalk that was manned, so not just a crosswalk, but a manned crosswalk in a school zone with flashing lights. Um, so that it was a safe crossing. And that's an example of an environmental change that was made to help with the well-being of these families and also save the school district some money because they weren't transporting kids less than a mile. Um, and a crosswalk could be put in to answer that question or answer that, you know, Problem. So there's a lot of uh, things that we could do. I know that um, it was a couple years ago uh, a study was done in our community. I, I'm, not, I'm not grasping the name of it. It was done by Dan Cotsworth. Um, and that was not enacted upon. Um, it was healthy. There's a healthy community, like they looked at walkability and bikeability, but also ADA um, areas of issue or safe routes to school where they identified frequently walked areas to school that didn't have sidewalks <coughs> or didn't have adequate lighting and things like that. And um, to my knowledge, we could still take that big study that was done and enact some of those uh, things to create environmental change that could affect the well-being of our citizens. Um, so I think also that well-being does pertain to quality of life, and I, so I would echo maintaining that quality of life for citizens is important. Carol Melfrey, what will you focus on to help with the well-being of our citizens as opposed to focusing only on businesses? That's a great question. Thank you uh, to whoever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anna, go on. Uh, the well-being of our, our community is extremely important to me. Um, I think here in Sierra Vista is more attainable than other places in America because we have, um, for example, me living on the West End, I walk my children to school every day, um, and then I walk to pick them up. My husband can ride his bike to work. I run my business in a shop behind my home, so I get, I get to work from home. I mean, it's just, I have the dream. <laughs> Um, and I think that adds to quality of life and well-being. Um, happy people get sick less. I was in a, um, we, I went to the Good Morning Sierra Vista recently, and the guest speaker was um, Sheriff Dan, uh, Daniels, uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> and he was talking about how, because this has come, come up before, we don't have a crisis center here in Sierra Vista, which is a huge problem. And so what happens is um, our, our firefighters and our, our EMS and our police officers end up dealing with things that should go to a, a center like that. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have that. So what he was bringing up was that in all the um, people they end up detaining, then end up bringing to their jail, 67% of them are um, suffering from some untreated mental affliction. And um, when I talked to him afterwards, he was saying he really wants to see something like uh, there's a center in Yavapai County that when the police officers, when they pick people up, they can bring them there. 
and out of, let's say, a, a thousand people that they pick up, only seven of them have been arrested since they put this center in place. Um, huge change and, and greatly affects our well-being. I have family that this would be a huge help for us here. I would love as a city council, as, as um, someone in government, to help support an effort in that area. I also think making sure we, um, when we can, I know it has to be prioritized in the budget, I'd like to see more um, uh, multi-use paths so people can go all around town no matter if they have a car or not, linear parks and that, the like. Thank you. William Bennett, what will you focus on as a city council member to help with the well-being of our citizens as opposed to focusing only on businesses? Okay, first I'll, I'll just put it out there. In order for the city to provide any kind of wellness, we need money. The economy is very important. I don't care who says it's not. Without the economy, the city cannot provide support in the means and those aspects. To do a crisis center, we need money. To do a rehabilitation center, we need money. Fix the economy, we can provide services we want in our city. That said, I think it's up to a council person to support well-being in the community. Like I said, I move businesses to the West End, but I also participated in the last five years with the West End cleanup. I also started and run movies in the park. In, in the park, I volunteer and I run Fourth of July. I volunteer and I started an event called Second Saturday. I volunteer and I do Halloween in the park. So we as individuals can promote wellness. It doesn't take a policy to help somebody else out. I belong to a group called CCRC, Cochise County Reentry Coalition. What's nice about this group, we're small, but we bring businesses, or excuse me, organizations within the community together, so our voice is large. That's supporting wellness. I don't need a policy that says, Mike, John, Bo, you're gonna come down here and do this, because people don't like people don't work like that. We work out of the goodness of our heart. And whatever religion you are, whether you you don't have to be religious or not, I, I don't even go there. But we do it because we want to do it. We spend time with people because we want to do it. I'm I'm happy as all get out. I was voted in the top three for philanthropist in Sierra Vista by the people. Never asked for it, don't want the award, but other people see the things I do, and that's that's heartfelt. Because we all up here, whether we win or not, I ran five years ago and I didn't win. All I did was keep working in my community. I kept doing things in my community that kept me involved. Because this community, I agree with, with Carolyn, we're not like any other community in the world in the US. It's something special. I remember the monument fire. How many people were in their Jeeps and trucks picking up dogs, picking up horses, picking up other people with fire next to them? I have a great video if you want to see it. Fire up around my Jeep. We did it because we love each other. That's how we promote wellness. We don't need policies to promote wellness. And those who think we do, if we do, then let's build the economy and we can pay for it. It works hand in hand. Thank y'all so much, VFW, Levi way back there, these great people up there. The Herald, do I have time? No, okay. Thanks so much for coming to you. Nope. Yeah, I'll be good, thank y'all. <laughs> What will you focus on to help with the well-being of our citizens as opposed to focusing only on businesses? Well, obviously, as, as, as I say, there's an economic connection. I think we had some good discussion here today. Uh, and uh, sir, I'll share with you that the information that was collected by Dan, uh, that we use that for community development block grants to justify the lights and, and sidewalks and uh, those type of things. And that's one of the rules of government the other, the other role of government specifically is make sure we have adequate parks, walking paths, and those kind of things. But really what I think we're talking about here is uh, partnerships that are go beyond, or issues that go beyond really the ability of the city of service to, to deal with. And in this case, we need to work with partners. We do have partners with, uh, we are partners with Salvation Army and work with them on issues. We work with uh, the uh, Corgash House, we work with uh, the Denver Alliance and, and other areas and the, the, the whole partnership and with a, a number of wellness agencies. There are things the city can help them do to be more effective to help our citizens and the things that they are uniquely qualified which the city will never be able to do 
to help our citizens. That's why the partnerships are important. That's why we need to continue to reach out when there is a social service agency, a charity, or, or whoever has an issue that they think the city can help. The city has been and, and hopefully will continue to be open to assist those folks in taking care of our citizens, no matter whether the issue is mental health, women's issues, abuse, uh, child, child abuse. Uh, I know the police department also has a number of folks that they outreach with to deal with criminal events that deal with this as well. So really the key for the future to be able to be effective to answer this question is we need to have effective partnerships where the city plays a role and those appropriate agencies play their role as well and we get the public involved. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much. Can those of you in the room give these candidates a hand, please? I just want to thank you for, you, you mentioned something that nobody else did that's very important to me, and that is the relationship we have with Sonora. I, I just wanted to thank, thank you for mentioning that. I love Claudia down there, the governor, and, and I really I really think we just need to make them the, the 51st state. And uh, that's, that's very important to this economy here, is making sure we work together and kind of uh, work together as much as we can on similar problems and stuff like that. So thank, thanks very much for, for mentioning that. And I, 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 I love your shirts, by the way. Welcome very much to October 2018, and uh, here we are at the mall. I've always had a couple of uh, problems with the mall area here. Uh, first of all, honestly, it's really been hard to even find the place. There's only a couple places in, and they're not well marked, and uh, there is a sign out on Highway 92 covered up by trees, and another one here to the main entrance that's actually covered up by trees. Uh, the place has a lot of vacancy in the, in the uh, food court, and in all of the uh, spaces available to the public re retail. So obviously there's an issue there. Uh, <laughs> Sears is closing and thank God they really messed me over with my car here. Uh, check engine light came on about two days after I had like a thousand dollars worth of work done. So yeah, we're done with Sears. And there's a Sierra Vista of Arizona official truck coming out of here to the mall. We're really not, no, not a whole lot of traffic here. Uh, a lot of empty, empty spaces like there are all over town. And uh, the food court can really use some, some uh, more business. The big thing here is the movie theaters for, for, for first run movies. And that's really a, actually a very popular place. But even those guys say that they're falling on hard, t hard times. But my buddies back in Hollywood just need, need to make some better movies, movies, that's all. Anyways, that's October 2018. Well, hi guys, welcome very much to the Sullivan's Project Spin Month Review for the month of October 2018. And we've had a lot of rain last couple of days, so now it's kind of cold, so it's finally sweater weather here, uh, down here in Southern Arizona. Uh, so much to talk about <laughs> this month. Uh, I've had a uh, couple of hospitalizations. Uh, had my computer go out on me, so I had to replace that, and we're still working with these, the software issues for the studio. But uh, once you see this online, uh, you'll know that's been fixed. <laughs> Thankfully, I was able to copy all the files off the C drive of the, the computer with the bad motherboard, so I didn't lose anything. And every two months, I offload everything anyway into external drive, so I, we didn't lose anything. So uh, I was back, back everything up, even if I have to do a da data transfer. <laughs> Anyways, uh, car caning is, you can see right here, the leaves are starting to change up there. So I'll, I'll try to get up there sometime this month. No promises. Thank you so much, sir. You have a wonderful night, okay? You too, sir. Hi. How's it going? And if Officer Nicole does not know, he's actually the model on the upcoming Coffee with the, with the Cop. On the uh, it's, it's the Facebook page Sierra Vista Police EMS Fire something like that but look it up you'll find it. Uh, Mark Daniels actually runs this operation and he's an awesome guy and he has some great deputies. How y'all doing tonight, my friends? Well, we're doing very well, thank you. You're on my live Facebook feed and we love Mark Daniels and we love everything you guys do down here. Uh, Geronimo, Geronimo and everything it's just more than than everybody can, can imagine. Wish you guys go through to 
uh, make it day to day to keep us safe and uh, protect and serve. And we're, we really appreciate it, guys. We really do. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Is a tour helicopter. Yeah. Used for like Grand Canyon and stuff like that. Um, it's just an extra safety mechanism. Well, let me tell you something, guys. Uh, Geronimo is an awesome beast. Uh, Mark Daniels got a really good deal on this thing. Uh, I think a lot of private funding is going into it. And what, what a great uh, public partner, uh, a private partner, pr public private partnership that is to put this thing together. And these, uh, these, these guys are all great. And I really do appreciate everything they do. They'll go get the illegals off the mountains, the uh, injured campers, everything. And this is the one that, that, that will uh, save their lives. Thank, thank you guys. This one is uh, November 3, 4, 8, Papa. And this guy is actually based out of uh, the Sierra Vista Airport, uh, right there on the uh, eastern end of that. It's a really great uh, job these guys do. I really appreciate appreciate all these guys do out here. Patients in wrecks around here to places like Banner, Banner Hospital or Tucson Memorial. And that, that's an awesome ambulance, guys. <laughs> we, we always see you guys landing out there at the airport right next to the fuel stop. So you guys do great work. And you're live on Facebook on my episode 22 of Border County, USA. Good, good to see you guys. All right. And here we go, guys. This is November 5, 8, Alpha Zulu, which means Arizona. And these are the uh, great trooper guys that work for Frank Nolstead. They are, uh, are uh, what do they call them? The chief trooper? <laughs> Yeah, he's the director of DPS. That's the D Department of, of uh, Public Safety here in Arizona, and these guys do great. And they do a lot of rescue work. They, they just they, they just don't fly over the roads and, and f see how fast you're going. These guys will save your life in a fix, and, and they have many times. And so, uh, really great to meet you guys tonight. Have, thanks for coming. All right. And they also work for uh, Colonel. Colonel Milstead from Arizona DPS, and they do great work down here. Are you a policeman? It looks like, let's, let's see that. Right on, buddy. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing tonight? Good. You're on my live video, episode 22 of Border County USA, and thanks for coming out here tonight. And I know you from somewhere. I think you did the Alice presentation. I did. You did. That was awesome. Thank you. We're trying to get our, our friend Garrett Lewis, who's, who's a radio host in uh, Tucson, to, to, to watch the film I, that, that I produced there that night because they really have no clue how to do this stuff right. They had started getting the Alice program up in Tucson, so. Well, yeah. that's that's great. And I'm, real, I'm really a big believer, and thanks for all you do, my friend. Have a And welcome very much to November 2018. And by the time you see this, all of this will be closed off. Last week on the television show, we actually went to the top and looked down on this. Not going that far today. I just love it up here on Car Canyon though. By far it's the most talked about, if not the most visited uh, place in all of 2018, 2017, and 2016. Just love it up here. And I keep asking the city and the county to get together with the Coronado National Forest who runs this place to try to integrate tourism into one seamless, lovable package. Because like I said, what's Clearwater Beach without <laughs> without the beach? You can't just feature Clearwater. It's kind of a run downtown. You can't, you can't feature Aspen without the ski slopes. But this lovely town here, Sierra Vista, sure loves to feature... Sierra Vista, 
without the county, which is th these mountains you see beyond, uh, and the Coronado National Forest, including my favorite place of all, Carr Canyon. My lovely Sierra Vista is right down there, shaped like an hourglass. I actually live up there in that area up there. The uh, cemetery I was at, actually all the places I've been to are all within this picture of Sierra Vista, Arizona. And we have me. So once again, November uh, was a really exciting month. It just happened like it was yesterday because it did. I just put the November mid-month review up just a couple of days ago. And by the time you see this, like I said before, all this will be closed down. Now they call it the falls for a couple of different reasons. Uh, <laughs> it is the falls. Uh, many people have actually fallen more than a thousand feet off the side of this thing. And believe me, there's no, all you, all you can do is hope you have a, a parachute in your pocket you can pull out because that, that is one long fall and you will die. But it's happened. Uh, actually, I think the most recent one was uh, of, uh, sometime in the summer of 2017, but I came up here and filmed that. But anyway, I'm gonna miss this place over the winter and it's really an outstanding place. Uh, the falls actually are up there, as you can see. Uh, Fort Huachuca is going to be right out there, that way. Like I said before, I live in that area there. And that's Fry Boulevard, Wilcox and all that area. The, the bypass is all there in the middle. And this is the southern part, which actually is like the bottom, the, the base of a champagne glass. And down there, as you can see, is the road we used to actually come up here. And it kind of snakes around. You, you can see a couple times here to come up here. And it, we're only halfway up this, this mountain, guys. Which is the, the really cool thing about it. Now, somebody that places this tree, it's cut by a, a saw uh, between here and the top. We're just going to get rid of this bad boy. But we're not going to send it down, down to the bottom. Just off, off the ledge here. It's kind of dangerous trying to walk over that thing. Once again, can't get enough of Sierra Vista, Arizona. They, they really can't get enough of Car Canyon. You saw this place in the background from all the shots down there. And uh, let's move on to Hunter Canyon, where we filmed the entirety of the uh, year review 2018 or 2017. And uh, we'll finish where we started. Just to give you a clue, it's back there on State Road 92, which we turned on to come up here. Come around here past uh, Palominas, I think. No, past Hereford. And on the, on the way to Palominas, you'll see the road converge. There's no sign from the highway. But just take a right, the first right you see. When the uh, road converges, you'll be out at Hunter Canyon. And I filmed a lot there, too. Not that much this year. Uh, but it's a... It forks off to the right, and then it dead, dead ends at a nice place to film. And it forks off to the left, which is where I'm going, which is also a nice place to go to. And in this shot here from coming down from Car Canyon, you can see Douglas way out there in the background in the center. Uh, Bisbee would be about, about right there. Uh, Palominas, Hereford, all that's here. And here we're going to see Sierra Vista. No, you're not. You, you're famous now, though. You're on my you're in your re review, but only for a split second. <laughs> you too. Where we were on the falls was actually right up there, quite a distance up there, but it's only halfway up the mountain. We're gonna make our turn to the right, down to uh, through Hereford, and then, like I said, when when the roads uh, when the lanes merge, that's where you turn. So bye-bye Car Canyon for 2018, and we'll catch you sometime in the spring 2019.
Well, hello guys and welcome to December 2018. And this is exactly where I was shooting this way at nighttime when I did the uh, year in review of 2017. So we're not gonna shoot into the sun. As you can see, it's uh, quite beautiful up here. Pretty good uh, climb to get up here. There is another person out here with a truck labeled Special Ops. <laughs> I don't doubt it. A lot of those in this area. One of the things I said once again last year when I did the year in review for 2017 was I really intended to find a new family down here in Sierra Vista and be it Stacy or Francis or uh, Carolyn or you name it. There's just so many people to name. I found it and uh, made, quite a, made quite a footprint here in, in Sierra Vista. Probably more than I wanted to on some days. <laughs> But uh, here is December uh, coming up, but what I wanted to tell you first is if there's anything to add on to this for the rest of December, I will be sure to include it after, after the special I'm going to air after December. And that's just a great overview of some of the great music I've heard this year uh, in Cochise County, mainly. And uh, really some great bands. And Frances really had a good one for a while, but she had to quit that one. She's by far the uh, most talented singer here in southern Arizona. So without further ado, let's, uh, most of it's not even filmed yet. Let's break it out to December 2018. God bless you guys. And like I said, if, if there's anything else to add, I'll put it on at the end. <laughs> 